पा रही है Hey guys, this is Nick with Jake Hammer Suppressors. Today we're talking about barrel lengths on 5.56 five, and 223 and how they translate into velocity and lethality and what's kind of the sweet spot with a suppressor being modular like ours. Can you make it shorter or longer and still kind of have the same suppression level depending on your barrel length? So we'll talk about what we're getting into in regards to that. But first I want to introduce our subject matter expert, Mr. Brock. Oh yeah, nice always a pleasure. Trip. Brock, generally, do I see more velocity or less velocity? And velocity is, we're talking about speed of something. So for all everyone who doesn't know science, the velocity is the speed of, it's actually probably more of a technical definition than that, but from my understanding, velocity is speed. So how much velocity do you gain or lose with different barrel lengths? Is it affected at all? Does it affect it just a little bit? There's a lot of factors that are going to come into it. Ammo, the projectile, powder, da 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 da. Okay. But generally, yes, the shorter the barrel, the slower uh, velocity you're gonna have. Okay, can I go so short that the bullet doesn't even work anymore? <laughs> Again, subjective. Okay. Uh, if you are gonna go short, maybe you wanna compensate with okay. things like twist rate or different powder, or different bullets. Different. But if you're shooting the same exact cartridge, through a plethora of different barrels, you're gonna reach a point where you're probably going to lose um, bullet stability. Now, can I go too long of a barrel and start having any problems there? You can go to a point of diminishing return where okay. you actually start slowing back down before the bullet exits the end of the barrel. Okay, so based on your knowledge of barrel lengths and 223, 556 calibers, I know there's a difference between those, but we can get that in another video. What's the shortest you can go without? having issues. Again, it's all pretty pretty subjective. I've seen okay. some eight inch 223 guns that shoot really dang good. Okay. Um, I've seen some guys toying around and stuff even shorter than that, it still shoots really dang good. So it's very, very subjective. Um, okay. Bullet const construction of the actual projectile and things like that come into play as well. Interesting. Um, as far as the length goes, I can't really speak on the 223, not seeing it myself, but I know, for instance, 22 LR, yeah, you hit that 24 inches or so of barrel, and you're going to be going quite a bit slower than say a 12 inch barrel. 12 inch barrel. Okay. Okay, it's good to know. All right, so we have an 11 and a half inch barrel, we have a 14 and a half inch barrel, and we have a 16 inch barrel. Out of those three categories of barrel length, what do you think is going to retain the most lethality? Well, obviously, we were talking about the longer the barrel, the higher velocity. What kind of numbers are we looking for generally with this caliber to be lethal for one? Well, lethal on target and lethal out of the muzzle are a couple, two okay. different things. But to answer your question, the most velocity and the best suppression is gonna be the longest barrel gun with the longest suppressor. Okay, okay. But that may not fall in line with the job you're trying to do or the use you're trying to have for that tool. Okay. So um, if the job you're trying to do is swing out of a vehicle window, um, shoot skunks in the ditch. You know, maybe you want to go down to something this length and maybe you only run four baffles, okay. five baffles on that. And I guess my second question, my follow-up to that is, based on your knowledge of this, what kind of ranges are we talking about? You were talking about muzzle lethality and then also target lethality. What kind of range are we looking at with each of these barrel lengths to stay, from your experience and your knowledge, um, what kind of ranges are we looking at? This is like a troll's wet dream of a video. <laughs> They're gonna be like, this many foot pounds of energy on targets lethal. And my uncle said this many foot pounds. No. Yeah. No, no. I don't know about you guys, but I wouldn't want to be hit by something even going 200 feet per second. That's just me. I agree. So for me, from my perspective and people I deal with a lot, it's a lot of just big game hunters, right? Okay. So in terms of big game hunting, some people say 1200 foot pounds on target. 
Um, I'll fudge that a little bit and say a thousand foot pounds on target. Okay. Um, so that obviously, the faster it's coming out of the muzzle, the more energy you're gonna carry down range, so on and so forth. Okay. That said, would I want to stand down range, say 900 yards down range from this gun, let somebody shoot at me? No. <laughs> no. No, it's probably gonna be lethal. It's probably gonna screw you up. Okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> so as far as terms of lethality, again, that's really subjective and what, in, what distance are you engaging your target at? And I've heard the old adage that like, if you don't have a 20 inch M16, then the 55 grain 223 is not gonna do what it's designed to do and that's fragment upon the target. And I've heard that sure. if you're not going around ballpark of 25 to 2600 feet per second, you're not, letting that round live up, to, live up to its full potential, so to speak. Sure, you're um, gonna, yeah, sure. You'll draw blood, but you're not gonna get uh, tumble and fragmentation or mushrooming, and whatever it is you're okay. looking for, sure. Okay. I think okay. I think all of these are gonna do it. And okay. again, it depends on how far are we trying to engage that target. Right. Um, I wouldn't stand downrange from any of this. But yeah, we'll see. We'll kind of play with the uh, suppressor. Because it's modular, we can kind of see baffle by baffle. Um, what kind of sound reduction we're getting from different barrel lengths, and then see uh, if we add any velocity to the round, because sometimes you can get a free bore effect. It's not very um, significant, but sometimes you can see some FPS increase, and FPS is feet per second. So we'll kind of test that right now. And uh, we got a chronograph, we got a sound meter, we have extra long big boy, and we have our standard goat here, which we'll break down baffle by baffle. And all right, well, let's go out there and test some of these barrel lengths and suppressors out and figure out if size really does matter or not. I have five kids. You? Zero. <laughs> this is where we're shooting today. We got this uh, arms core, 223, 55 grain FMJs. We're gonna shoot this on all the platforms. We're gonna do start out unsuppressed, take some meter results. We're gonna do one baffle, take some meter results. We're gonna, you know, then we're just gonna keep doing some stuff. Science, Science. stuff. We're gonna do some stuff. Science! Science! And I'm calibrating the microphone right now on this sound meter. Did somebody mention 20 inch and more lethality? Dude, this is wrong, wrong video. Wrong video? Yeah, check what? the schedule, homie. Yeah, aren't you supposed to be cleaning nope. the bathrooms or something right now? <laughs> Bathroom duty. Yep. Thank you. Okay, for the sound metering, we're gonna use this Larson Davis LXT1. And I'm gonna be about a meter away from the muzzle. Okay, so it's gonna be an unsuppressed baseline, just one shot, just to kind of see where we're at on this barrel length of this ammo. And I am ready to go. 167.6 is what we got just now from this 11.5 inch. 26.50, so quite a bit of difference in velocity. All right, 14.5 inches now, go ahead. 167.3, 2836.9 feet per second is our unsuppressed baseline for the 14.5 shooting 223. Okay, so now we're doing the 16 inch mid length gas. Go ahead. 166.1 with a velocity of 2937 feet, well, 0.4 feet per second. Okay, so now 11.5. One baffle in the end cap. Go ahead. 155.4. So we're seeing about a 10 decibel reduction right off the bat with just one baffle. And the velocity was 2693.5. So last shot was 2693.5. Let's see if velocity goes up at all. We were at 155 decibels. So we'll see if uh, two baffles now in the end cap can make a difference. Send it. Okay, 153.9. So that was only a reduction of about 1.1 decibels, which is one more baffle. Interesting, so very little effect. Velocity was 26.14.4. <clears throat> now we're doing 11.5 with three baffles. Okay, send it. 148.6. So now we've come down about seven decibels from the last one, so that's not bad. And we have a velocity of 2600, so a little bit lower velocity on that shot. But keep in mind, this is arms core, only the finest and most consistent ammo in the world. Just joking, it's not the most consistent, so you might be see some, some variances in velocity there. 
So now we have the 11.5 with four baffles in the end cap. Send it. 145.9 with a velocity of 26, 20.4. 20 so kind of in that window of 2600 to 2650 is what we're seeing right now. Okay, so now we have an 11.5 inch barrel with the full size goat high flow, which is the full five baffles in the end cap, high flow end cap. So this is how it ships from the factory. This is what it would sound like on a 11.5 shooting 223. Send it. 145.2, velocity of 27,164. So we saw a little bit of a spike in velocity there. Just for fun, this is a 23 baffle goat with a nine millimeter high flow end cap. And last shot was 27,16.4. So we'll see if we get any velocity increase with this length of suppressor. Send it. 134.8 with a velocity of 2597.4. So almost 2600. So we did not see a increase in velocity. Now we got a 14.5 inch mid length with a goat with one baffle and the end cap. Send it. 154.0. So that was about 10 decibel reduction again, just off that one baffle. And the velocity was 29.28.5. Okay, so 14.5 inch barrel again, this time with two baffles. We'll see what happens. Send it. 150.9, so about a four or five decibel reduction since the last shot. So better than on the 11.5. Just that one, two baffle. Interesting, actually. And the velocity was 2877. Now it's going to be the 14.5 inch mid length gas system with Thraglaza. Thraglaza. Three baffles. So we'll see the difference. Last shot was 2877.6 feet per second, and it was around 150 decibels. We'll see what three looks like. Send it. 148.1. So two decibel reduction and a velocity of 2843.3. Even less velocity at that time. Again, 14.5 with four baffles. Send it. 144.0, four decibels above hearing safe. Velocity of 2876.4. So right in that range of like 27 to 29, that's kind of what we're seeing with this 14.5. 14.5 with the full stack goat this time. So five baffles, send it. We got 140.6. If uh, you're wearing ears with that setup, you're hearing safe, baby and velocity is 28.6 or 2865.4 feet per second. All right, 14.5 inches with 23 baffles. Send it. 134.2. That sounds like a 22. Not That's bad. pretty cool. Not bad at all. Can't wait to hear what the 16 inch sounds like. 2899.1. So we're almost 3000. Okay, 16 inch mid-length gas with one baffle and an end cap. Across the board so far, we've seen that one baffle reduces about 10 decibels. Send it. 151.5. We're seeing the trend there. One baffle gets you about a 10 decibel reduction. And the velocity was 3,008.9 feet per second. Oh, we have the 16 inch barrel with two baffles and the end cap. Send it. 150.8, so no real difference in sound reduction with that barrel length and adding one baffle. Velocity 2964.8, so we saw a little bit of velocity decrease there. Again, that could be just the deviation or the variances in the ammo we're using as well. 16 inch mid length with three baffles this time. And keep in mind too guys, the velocity reads we're getting are kind of be a little different, not only because of the ammo, but because everything's been laying out here in the sun and it is 85 degrees out here right now. Guns and ammo as they get hotter tend to run harder and tend to put out bullets that shoot faster. So it's just kind of all the part of the rough test we're doing right now. But anyways, three baffles, 16 inch. Let's see it, send it. 146.3 with three baffles. Saw a little bit of a reduction there, about four more baffles down or four more, four more decibels down. I'm getting baffles and decibels and FPS. It's all the same. Mixed up today. It's the sun. <laughs> Okay, so we're almost there, folks. We're almost there. We got four baffles on the 16 inch now. Let's see what happens. Send it. 
143.7. So we are just right there. We're almost there. 2970.9. Pretty consistently right near 3000. 16 inch barrel, full stack goat, meaning five baffles. How it comes from the factory. Send it. 138.0. Nice. So we are 29.55.5. So again, right there at that 3000 feet per second threshold. Oh yeah, now we'll see what 23 baffles sounds like on a 16 inch barrel. Rock, does size matter? Is it really only two inches to the cervix? <laughs> I always thought it was three, but if it's two, I'm having this bad day for me. I was told the big ones hurt, so. I didn't ask. For this next test, 16 inch barrel, not one, not two, not, th but 23 baffles. Send it. 134.1 is what I got over here. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like a 22, actually. 3,024.8. So a little bit of a velocity jump there. That could have been a free bore effect. So Brock, does size matter? What are you wearing on your feet? <laughs> <laughs> From our conclusion, I think the numbers won't lie and we'll just be fully transparent with you guys. It seems like, well, velocity wise, out to distance, we'll probably see that the 14.5 and the 16 are the real choices for anything outside of close quarters. And uh, as far as sound reduction goes, we found that on the 14.5 and the 16 inch with a full length goat, you are achieving hearing safe numbers. I don't know about you guys, but I actually prefer to wear ears when I shoot ARs just because of the bolt noise and all that stuff. So uh, with good ears and a goat on a good rifle like this, uh, you can shoot all day long comfortably, which is nice. Now on the 11.5, we saw that it was right in the mid 140s uh, with, the, with the full length goat, which again, if you're wearing ears, it's acceptable. If you're not wearing ears, I would say just be careful and kind of keep it up to your own discretion of how comfortable you are when you shoot. Kind of cool to see that uh, the, the way it's designed, the way it's intended to be shot, uh, we made it like this for a reason. And even though it can be broken down, uh, which is the beauty of being modular, uh, on a 5.56, this is the way I prefer to run it personally. Now Brock might have a different opinion, other people might have different opinions, but I like my 14.5 with a full length goat. Uh, to me, that's the sweet spot of both uh, sound reduction, flash mitigation, recoil reduction, uh, gas mitigation to my face, all that stuff. And that's my choice is going to be the 14.5 with the five baffled goat. What is your opinion, Brock? I liked them all. It's America. Do what you want. That's true. If you had to pick one. If I had to pick one. A Barrett 50. Yeah. Where's Jake? Where's the Barrett? <laughs> Lethality <laughs> and barrel length. If I had to pick one, like honestly, honestly, if I had to pick one, mm -hmm. nice snowy day, I'd take the shorty with the full goat. Also too, I know I've been holding this the whole time. If you're wondering how can I get something like this, while it may seem ridiculous, we can do that for you. We have our custom shop on our website called the VSX page, which is our versatile system, versatile suppressor system. And essentially you can choose your materials, your build materials. You can choose your calibers. You can choose your length of suppressor and you can choose custom Cerakote colors. So uh, if you want something like this 23 baffle suppressor, we can probably make it for you. Now, price is gonna vary depending on material and length, but you can find all that information on our website. Again, the 155 VSX custom suppressor from JK Arma Suppressors. All right, guys, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Again, like we said, uh, even though we are wearing lab coats, we are not scientists. And uh, this is a rough test, like I said. The sound metering was just kind of rough the velocity was kind of rough and uh but we enjoyed this so thanks again brock thank, thank you. you and uh hopefully you guys learned something from this again if you like the goat you can find our website sound the shop or any i guess any number of dealers across the nation as well but uh if you're a veteran or first responder sign up for our phalanx program and you can get this at a good price so again thanks guys we'll see you on the range <laughs>